Hi and welcome to the Penguin Tool, the free to use Google algorithm and penalty checking tool by Barracuda Digital. My name is Anthony and Penguin Tool Algorithm Filters Explained is the snappy title of the fourth video in our Penguin series. In this video we're going to go over each of the 14 algorithm filter classifications that we have made selectable within the tool. We've tried to make each of the groupings as useful as possible for investigating what's going on from an algorithm change point of view. Hopefully you'll find them easy to use. <coughs> the algorithm update categories we've assigned cover all major updates to date and therefore will give you a more complete understanding of why and what needs to be done to get your site ranking highly in Google SERPs. To understand Google and its algorithm updates is to understand SEO and how it's evolving. Think of it like this. Algorithm updates act as a window onto what Google is trying to achieve uh, for its users. And importantly, for webmasters and marketers with budgetary considerations, how well they're doing at enforcing and policing their quality guidelines to provide their desired user experience. So let's dive in and take a look. As you can see, when you first arrive into the tool, all the algorithm update lines for all of the categories are active. Let's first turn them all off so we can discuss them in turn. First up is structural updates. These are the big changes Google makes to the way it crawls and indexes the web. It's less about the ranking side and more about the logistics of crawling and indexation. This then has a knock-on to what Google are then able to do from a ranking point of view, but as mentioned, in and of themselves, structural updates are about logistics. Two examples of structural updates are Caffeine in June 2010 and Hummingbird in August 2013. After months of testing, Google finished rolling out the Caffeine infrastructure. Caffeine not only boosted Google's raw speed, but integrated crawling and indexation much more tightly, resulting in, according to Google, a 50% fresher index. Then, announced on the 26th of September, Google suggested that the Hummingbird update rolled out about a month earlier. Best guess is around the 20th of August. And there were many reports of flux from the 20th to the 22nd of August. The update was designed to power changes to semantic search and the knowledge graph. Moving on, let's look at one of the big changes that really fueled the hype and obsession with Google algorithm updates, Panda. Panda began rolling out on the 23rd of February 2011 and continued over the course of at least a couple of months. It then launched in Europe in, on, in April of the same year. Panda was a game changer. Up to this point, the level of seriously poor content featuring highly in the SERPs was rife, as was the practice of stealing content from reputable websites and republishing it on aggregator websites to steal their organic traffic, a practice known as scraping. Panda and its many subsequent updates, 28 that we know about, the last being on the 17th of July 2015, sought to put a stop to that and used machine learning, or artificial intelligence, to stay ahead of the spammers. The name Panda comes from Navneet Panda, the Google engineer who pioneered the method of scalable machine learning that made this breakthrough possible. But originally, the SEO industry called it the farmer update, after its nature of devaluing scraped or farmed content. When Panda first landed, it hit a lot of sites hard, with Google reporting that it affected up to 12% of search results, a huge percentage when compared to other large algorithm updates. The major types of dodgy content that Panda targeted were thin content, content farms, and sites with high add to content ratios, but there were also a number of other quality issues that were targeted as well. The other kicker was Panda was a site-wide filter, as in, if you were caught, it wasn't just your bad pages that suffered in the SERPs, it was your whole website. Once caught, you had to repair the damage and wait for the next update to see if you had done enough to re-emerge in the SERPs. According to Google, Panda has now been baked in to the main core quality algorithm, so we no longer hear about updates and changes. So from one black and white critter to another, let's move on and talk about Panda's buddy, Penguin. Penguin first rolled out on the 24th of April 2012 and was another game changer. After weeks of speculation about an over optimization penalty, Google finally rolled out the web spam update, which was soon dubbed Penguin. Penguin adjusted a number of spam factors, including keyword stuffing, and impacted an estimated 3.1% of English queries. 
If you were acquiring links over from over-optimized websites that existed primarily for the purpose of directing link equity to the likes of your website, then things probably didn't go well for you in 2012. Similar to Panda, this was a site-wide filter. So if you were caught, it impacted your whole site's rankings. One of the truly devastating aspects of Penguin was the infrequency of the updates. As with Panda, if you were caught, you had to repair the damage by removing or disavowing what you had judged to be the offending links and then wait for the next update. To start with, it was a few months, then a year, and then two years between updates. The nature of Penguin finally changed in September 2016 when Google switched it to devalue bad links instead of devaluing websites with bad links. Google also announced that, like Panda, Penguin is now baked into the core quality algorithm. Then we have the core quality updates themselves. Uh, after the release of Phantom 2 in May 2015 and the amalgamation of Panda and then Penguin into the main ranking algorithm, the SEO industry started to see a shift in the way Google were rolling out major ranking changes. Around the time of Phantom 2, Google acknowledged rolling out a core algorithm change impacting quality signals. This had a broad impact, but Google didn't reveal any specifics about the nature of the signals involved. Looking back, this could well have been rank brain rolling out. The Fred update in March 2017 was another example. This update seemed to go after websites that were content driven and heavy with ad placements. In fact, many targets, not all but many, were created with the sole purpose of generating AdSense or other ad income without necessarily benefiting the user. The name Fred came from Google's Gary Ills who uh, jokingly suggested that up all updates be named Fred. Up next are the unnamed updates. These are the updates spotted by the SEO industry and not confirmed by Google. Uh, and are not classified as core quality updates uh, within the tool. They're ranking fluctuations that happen on a large enough scale to trigger alarms in the various SERP tracking tools. We now move logically from unnamed to named updates. These are the updates that either the SEO industry named or Google actually came out and acknowledged beyond their standard shtick of we're always making updates. Panda and Penguin are both examples of named updates, but are big enough to have their own categories within the tool. The splicing of the two words actually gave this tool its name, Penguin. Another more recent example of a big named update is RankBrain, which was announced in October 2015, but as mentioned, probably rolled out in spring of 2015. In the announcement, Google revealed that machine learning was now a direct part of the ranking algorithm and that RankBrain now constituted the third most influential ranking factor. Then we have the blandly named Other Updates, which we've used to group a series of updates that themselves represented uh, or represent a groups of updates. This was back when Google, for a time, got into the habit of announcing uh, what they've been up to algorithmically to, uh, towards the end of 2011 and throughout 2012. Mobile updates kicked off with mobile friendly on uh, the 21st of April 2015, uh, also known as Mobile Ageddon, or you know, uh, Mobile Ageddon that wasn't. Google released a significant new mobile friendly ranking algorithm uh, that's designed to give a boost to mobile friendly pages in Google's mobile search results. We then had the mobile intrusive interstitial penalty uh, that rolled out on the 10th of January 2017, which impacts intrusive interstitials that happen directly after going from a Google mobile search result to a specific page. One to watch out for is the upcoming mobile first index rollout. Then we have local. Uh, which are a series of updates that focus particularly on local search and the map packs in Google SERPs. Early on, we had Venice at the end of February 2012, a local update that appeared to more aggressively localize organic results uh, and more tightly integrate local search data. Then we had Pigeon rollout in mid and late uh, 2014, where Google shook the local SEO world with an update that dramatically altered some uh, local results and modified how they handle and interpret location cues. Google claimed that Pigeon created closer ties between the local algorithm and its main core algorithms. Possum was released in early September 2017. 
This one was not confirmed by Google, but named by the SEO industry. What was observed was a drop in local pack prevalence, and the local SEO community noted a major shakeup in local search pack results. Before we move on to the final set of named filters that deal with more niche aspects of the algorithm, let's take a look at our feature category. We've grouped these as a set of updates where Google have given webmasters extra tools for search like schema markup in June 2011 or they changed something about the appearance of the SERPs like the addition of the knowledge graph in May 2012 or indeed the removal of author photos from the SERPs in August 2014. A more recent example would be the AdWords shakeup in February 2016 where Google added the fourth ad at the top of the SERPs and entirely removed right column ads. To finish off, we now have four named updates that have each had uh, multiple iterations. The first is Top Heavy, which rolled out on the 19th of January 2012. It's estimated, that if it, it's estimated that it affected less than 1% of searches globally. Uh, and in Google's own words, in our ongoing effort to help you find more high quality websites and search results, today we're launching an algorithmic change that looks at the layout of a web page and the amount of content you see on the page once you click on a result. This algorithmic change does not affect sites who place ads above the fold to a normal degree, but affects sites that go much further to load the top of the page with ads to an excessive degree or that make it hard to find the actual original content on the page. This new algorithmic improvement tends to impact sites where there is only a small amount of visible content above the fold or relevant content is persistently pushed down by larger blocks of ads. So there we are, uh, Google's own words. Uh, there have been three iterations of Top Heavy uh, so far. Next we have the Payday Loan Update, which first rolled out on the 11th of June 2013 and was designed to target spammy queries such as Payday Loan, Pornographic and other heavily spammed queries. Then Head of Web Spam Matt Cutts explained that this update goes after unique link schemes, many of which are against Google's guidelines. There have been three iterations of the Payday Loan Update so far. SERP Clustering is a group of three updates so far uh, that are not necessarily the exact same part of the algorithm being changed each time but they do relate to the same thing and that is how many times a single domain can appear for a given search term. The first iteration rolled out on the 31st of August 2010 and was called the brand update which increased the number of times a domain could appear for a given search term. Then on the 14th of September 2010, the SERP diversity update dialed this back to increase the level of diversity in domains appearing in the SERPs. The third and last in this group to date happened on the 21st of May 2013 and was called the domain crowding update. This further built on increasing the level of domain diversity in the SERPs, but deeper within the SERPs, so pages two and beyond. Matt Cutts explained that once you've seen a cluster of about four results from a specific domain name, the subsequent pages are going to be less likely to show you results from that domain name. Finally, we have the Pirate Update with its two iterations to date. The first rolled out on the 11th of August 2012, with the second being pushed live on the 21st of October 2014. The purpose of the update was to penalise sites with repeat copyright violations, probably via DMCA takedown requests. So that's all 14 algorithm categories explained. I hope you've enjoyed our little series of videos and hopefully they'll help you get the most out of Penguin. And of course, thanks again for using our tool.